So first off, um, a lot of people were really overreacting, like about the Mavericks, and that includes me. Like in my last video, I was kind of like, uh, maybe they they're really bad and maybe they're tanking, but I didn't really want that. But now they're they're eight and nine, I, I believe. Wait, I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, they're eight and nine, and they're like they're only one and a half game behind the playoffs. So that is really good in my opinion, like considering the last two years. That's like a major improvement. And um, they've won the last six out of eight games. Um, and they had a four game winning streak recently. They, I believe they're five and, they're, they have a, a winning streak of five at home right now, which is really good. So everything is going in the right direction. They've won against great teams. Yeah, the Warriors, they maybe aren't as great right now, but usually they're great and they're the world championship champions or the NBA champions. And Utah be beat the Mavs twice and they beat them by 50 points. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with how the Mavericks are playing right now. But like I said in my previous video, things were gonna get fine, are gonna, gonna be fine. And they are fine right now. A lot of people were like, giving up and they, they're saying the Mavs should tank and mm, yeah I, I never really I maybe at that point it was a a good mindset but I wasn't I never wanted that even the, the last couple of years yeah we got Dennis Smith Jr and Luka Doncic from that but I never really wanted the Mavs to tank but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with those two players, so it's okay. So, also in my last video I talked about how I wanted uh, Dorian Finney-Smith to start. And he's basically doing that. Like, Wes Matthews has been out a lot. And when he's not out, he, he starts, but he's the first one to go to the bench. And he plays with the second unit mostly. So, yeah, Dorian's basically starting, and that's great. He should be, and he's... Like, Wes Matthews, according to Rick Carlisle, mostly starts because he's, like, a, a decent playmaker. Which he isn't really, like, he, he's not, he's, he's kind of decent at passing. Like, he, his IQ is, is good, but he's just not a great ball handler. And, yeah, it's kind of like how Clay Thompson is a good playmaker, but not really with the ball. Like, more like with just great passing decisions. Though Clay Thompson is still a better playmaker, I think, but yeah. Also, uh, Maxi Kleber has been shooting better. I don't really remember, but he had like a lot of missed shots in a row, a lot of three-pointers and yeah, three-pointers, I mean, like uh, only three-pointers, but um, he's been shooting well now, so that's been going better. His defense is still great. He still is great in the paint. Dirk is coming back soon, which is great. So everything's going better because of that. Like, I, Dirk is maybe still one of the best players on the Mavs. Like, I don't know how much he's going to play this year. And I don't know how good he's going to be after that uh, knee or ankle surgery. I don't really, really remember. I think his knee. But, um, no, his ankle, I think, yeah. But, um... He, uh... He's going to help a lot, still, even though he's 40. And Harrison Barnes has been playing much better recently after that injury. Like, a lot of other people said that, but like uh, Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes missed a lot of training camp and um, a, lot of, um, a lot of the beginning from the season. So basically, this is the beginning of his season. So it took a while, but now he's been playing great. I, I said that I wanted to trade him, that I wanted him to be traded, but I still, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to trade him, but it's not really needed anymore. His three-point shooting is going up. He is, he is, even though he's playing off the ball a lot now, 
it looks a lot better than it did in Golden State because his ball handling has improved so much since he's been in Dallas. Like he he, he knows how to create space for himself and stuff like that. So he's not as bad off the ball as he used to be. So yeah, Barnes fits fine. It's 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 okay. Luka Doncic has been playing uh, great as well. Of course, he's been playing great all all year. Basically, every week he, every week he's improving. It's like it's crazy. He's been the uh, rookie of the uh, of the, uh, excuse me. He's been uh, rookie of the month this year, and that's great. He uh, he's been playing really well. His three-point shooting percentage is great. He makes a lot of great decisions. He's basically keeping the Mavs in games this year all by himself. Like, the Mavs aren't going anywhere in the fourth quarter. But then he just shoots, like, crazy three-pointers in a row and, and stuff like that. And the Mavs are back in the game and they win it. It's happened a couple of times now. And that's crazy because the last couple of years, the Mavs were so bad in the fourth quarter. And... It's crazy that a rookie is basically helping them with that. Which, of course, Luca has been playing professionally since he's 14. And I've seen him play a little bit in uh, in some Real Madrid games. But mostly I've seen him play in uh, the Slovenian national team. national team. And he's been playing great there. Like, he, he was playing, playing off the ball, which a lot of people didn't think he could do. But he did it, and he did it great. And he was only 18 at that time. And the, he... he um, a, a Slovenian team that never really got that far. And that only really has Goran Dragic as like a well-known player. I mean, no, that's not really true. They have one or two other guys that are like decent. They've played a couple of times in the NBA. Like Anthony Randolph, I think it was. Which is really weird because he has an English name. But he is Slovenian for some reason. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. But he, that team isn't really great without Luca, and they added Luca, and they became the, the European champions. And that's insane. And that's that that got Igor Korkoshkov an NBA job for the Suns. So that's how good Luca is. And it's weird because he's a rookie, yet he's helping the Mavs, and he's he's the best player for the Mavs. And he's even, even though I knew about him from Slovenia and stuff, he's even exceeding my expectations because I thought he might might not be in the Rookie of the Year conversation as much because, like, I thought it maybe it it it, it would take a, a bit of adjusting to the maths, but yeah, he's doing it. He's playing great and. It's it's like he's been playing in the NBA for like five years. It's cr- it's crazy. Um, but DeAndre Jordan is still not playing great defense. Like it's it's kind of annoying. He often he just ignores players going to the to the paint. He just lets them go by. Um, he still doesn't really catch as many lobs as you would expect. Like. Maxi Kleber and, and, and Dwight Powell are, play, are playing so much more efficiently than DeAndre Jordan. It's really weird. But he's not playing that bad. He's, he's he catch he grabs a lot of rebounds, which is great. And like I, I talked about that in my last video, like uh he grabbed that rebound and he pushed Luka Doncic away. But like apparently that's just something DeAndre Jordan does a lot because he he just fights for every rebound and a lot of more centers seem to do that. It's not so, something you often really pay attention to, but like because the Mavs had bad starts, it's just yeah, you, you you turn it into stories that aren't really there. You know, you think like, oh, the chemistry issues, but it's not really a problem. Everybody seems to be um, like each other and stuff. And though I think I do, agree with a lot of people saying that the Army Jordan and Wesley Matthews are basically um, playing for their contract, you know. They only have a one-year contract and they really seem to like pad their stats a little bit 
but that's not that much of an issue you know I they're still playing great like I said and uh, maybe next year they're gone or maybe DeAndre Jordan gets a contract extension and then everything everything will be over I mean not that there's not that there's a problem he's just stat padding a little bit it seems but probably if you ask a team they probably like no that's not true like he he just rebounds a lot and stuff and it's also Rick's decision to make him a playmaker and he's actually been doing that better now being a playmaker that that really it was kind of weird like they did that with Andrew Bogut a couple of years ago and now they're doing it with Yara Jordan but he's actually kind of good at it so it is, that kind of works so the Mavs right now they have a lot of injuries Devin Harris has just come back from an injury Harrison Barnes as well Dirk is still coming back from it basically at the end of the month or maybe the beginning of next month also uh, did I say Devin Harris? yeah he, yeah. he, he just came back Wesley Matthews is injured right now JJ Brea has been injured a couple of games Twilight Powell has been injured last game I think or the game, game before that but even though they have injuries they're still playing great better than the beginning of the season so it, it could only get better from here and I think the Mavs are definitely going to make going to make the playoffs like teams like the Clippers are right now in the in the playoffs but I don't think they're going to keep that up the Kings they're they're, they're not doing that either Though teams like the Jazz, who have been struggling a bit, and the Rockets, they're probably going to play better. So it's still not that... Um, it's still not like that um, obvious for the Mavs to have a spot, but I think they can do it. And speaking of that, I think the this is recorded on uh, Friday the 23rd, by the way. And tomorrow the Mavs are going to play the Celtics. And I think they're going to win that. Like the Celtics have been struggling a bit. Like right now on paper they're probably better than the Mavericks. But I'm always like when an Easter team is slightly better than a, West, than a Western team. The Western team probably wins. It's often the case. Like Western teams just have a lot of tougher opponents. And so losses are easier to get. And... Yeah, I mean, the Celtics should be better, so the Mavs are definitely going to win that. And if they don't, it's kind of disappointing with the way they've been playing right now. Actually, I, th I think it was kind of disappointing that they lost against the Grizzlies, but the Grizzlies right now are the best team in the West, so it's not that disappointing. And the, the Grizzlies have been playing really well. It's tough to say whether they can keep it up, like they whether they... Um, keep like home court or maybe they even fall out of the playoffs it could go anywhere the same with Portland it's like I really don't know what kind of team they are right now Golden State I think also like they're keep they keep playing worse but I don't think they're gonna fall out of the playoffs and also Steph Curry and Great Draymond Green are gonna come back and then they're gonna go up and yeah so I just want to end this with basketball in general has been a lot more fun for me this year so far because the Mavs are simply just playing better. The last couple of years I didn't really keep up keep up with the NBA as much because like there's no competition for the Mavericks so it's not really as fun and like now I really see like Memphis be playing well but then I, I think like it kind of feels, I'm not sure if that's the case, but it kind of feels like they've been lucky. Portland as well a bit. So it kind of feels like the Mavs are still competing with teams like that. And so it's fun to keep track on uh, with those teams and stuff. And last year was kind of like, what? why bother? You know, it's just the Mavs are going to tank anyway. So it doesn't really matter matter who they go up against in a potential playoff seed because they're not getting any any of that. Though, 
though educating educating myself on draft prospects was was a bit of fun last couple of years. I really studied for well, I don't really follow college and I usually never really look stuff up about college players and stuff. So for for my experience it was I was really educating myself on those players and I was really high on uh, Mohamed Bamba last year. I really hoped the Mavs would get him because I just felt like he was a great fit. But that was mostly because I didn't really expect the Mavs to get Luka Doncic like I thought he was going number one. Like I think the, the Suns and the Kings are crazy for passing him up. And the Hawks as well, especially the Hawks. But the Mavs got him, so I'm I'm more than happy. Like he was my number one prospect in the draft. So, yeah, but like yeah, the, studying uh, the draft was fun, but focusing on playoff matchups is a lot more fun. And the Mavs seeing to seeing fighting for a playoff seed, that's just so much more fun. So that's it, guys. Have a nice um, weekend. Thanksgiving is over, I believe. I don't celebrate it in Europe, but uh, yeah, happy Black Friday, happy weekend.